welcome to combined by example um, um, I had so much kind of fun making this combine uh, specifically for uh, for our uh, open telemetry uh, kind of project and I did I have been with beam for a while and I remember though that like in the beginning it was kind of hard to grasp if you need to data process it what is this combine yeah I can understand it but like uh, but it's it's pretty simple and certainly now when you're kind of work so long with beam it's so simple but uh, it's not something that you kind of implement so often and I had lots of fun with this one so I just made this talk so it's uh, focused on to one specific aspect of open telemetry and it's the exponential histogram so I'm kind of the spec nerd like so I saw it popping up in kind of the spec uh, but there were no implementation out of it and I said like this is really useful instead of like those fixed histograms those exponential histograms so I just wanted to implement it so open telemetry for those that were not on my talk yesterday it's kind of an SDK an API a model whatever all for uh, telemetry data metrics traces and and logs so this focuses on one specific metric type and that's uh, exponential backup so um, back off now exponential histogram so wh what is it actually so it, it all boils down to this formula so an histogram is normally you just have buckets with like if you have that number you put it in that bucket um, and like the classic histograms is you have fixed boundaries that you set like yourself like in like in Prometheus people that know Prometheus you define some boundaries here the boundaries are kind of driven by this formula so you set the scale of your histogram that actually defines what your resolution is and then with uh, you get a base and each boundary is then like a power of that base so but I have spent some time in drawing this out oh, oh, oh. so I'm not kind of the math wizard so I said like let's put it uh, uh, formally kind of in uh, in sheets and then by magic it's just like oh nice um, you really see kind of that trend towards kind of what the resolution is so on the top you have the scale so scale zero is very familiar it's like just base two so it's like one two four and so on if you go higher in your scale the resolution goes down but if you go like sorry lower if you go higher the resolution is actually always double the amount of of, uh, of resolution that you have in your histogram so graphically spent it's like this so your your one base zero is like this scale and then the resolution goes up or down I'm gonna quickly go into the protobuf so because that was the, the original thing so it has like lots of details how it's stored how it comes in and what we do with it so you of course have the start and timestamp some basic housekeeping how many elements are in your histogram uh, sums minus and maximums um, specific things the scale is of course stored like each each one can have a different scale how many are in zero positive and negative I only implemented the positive part um, because that's what we needed we we implement our accumulator accordingly to our uses so. and then you have your buckets so the buckets that's where your your uh, numbers uh, end up in so some design decisions on uh, how we created our um, combined event so um, first of all Rob actually already kind of mentioned what he <laughs> needed so <laughs> there was a teaser I left out to create accumulator um, but those three uh, were kind of uh, the things you need like the one is the add input and the other one is the mutable accumulator the mutable is kind of important because it actually it's it's actually 
uh, what is constantly changing and keeping track of everything. The merch accumulator, of course, like, again, Rob, you spoiled it all. <laughs> uh, so it takes like an accumulator in and it merges it with everything uh, inside. But I'll, I'll show you that kind of the exponential histogram is a really nice thing to, to merge and then extract the output uh, that's kind of to your output source. We did kind of a different design decision there, um, but I'll come back to that. <laughs> so first of all, the proto we're not taking as an accumulator. It was the first thing I saw, oh, well, that stores everything. But um, this is a Java implementation, a proto in itself is kind of non, is immutable. You have the builder, that's kind of mutable, and then you do kind of build and then you have an immutable object. Then if you want to rebuild it, you have to make new builder, change it, and so on and so on. And you showed, we showed that like, the accumulator needs to be mutable, and that's for performance reasons, of course. <clears throat> so, made kind of a boiled down version just in the Java class with actually things that you find in the Proto. Um, but we left that time. I'll come back to that one. So, and for our use case, there's a special one. Our output is also the accumulator. Uh, why? Um, because we're using kind of metrics and we reuse our, our uh, accumulator across time windows. For example, we want to have an histogram of certain events on one minute, on five minutes, and 15 minutes. And we just kind of dribble it down. So that output of that accumulator is in an output. Then we put it in a five minute window, in a 15 minute window. So the 15 minute window, accumulates like lots of one minute kind of uh, uh, accumulators. So that's why that's the output. Uh, but then we had like the need, of course, to have like a, an extra do fun to actually transfer our accumulator to our original metric again. Like, um, so that's what we did. Oh, yeah. Um, why also the separate do do fun is like those it's metric that we have a metric has a time time thing in its uh, proto buff and correct me or wrong i don't think you have access to that window maybe i missed something uh, in the do fun you can well it, in your job at least um so if you create like process element you add the bounded window and you have access to the window uh, things. I didn't find out how in a combined function you add, uh, have access to that window functionality. So that's how we recreate our proto with kind of our bounds of what's the time frame we're working on. Another design decision is, put, for us, put most of the logic in a accumulator of like adding things here. That's purely specific on this one. Yeah, there are other use cases, probably you push everything in a combined function, but here we, we put everything there. So we have made our custom accumulator because we wrote it ourselves. And have like add value and then do a search of in one in which bucket it, it is, and it's done. So, and only the combined function itself is pretty simple. Actually, you just call your accumulator for kind of merging, for example, and then just do add, add, add on that mutable um, mutable accumulator. So it's more for housekeeping than for anything else. That's the implementation combined function itself. That's when I made this slide, so there was kind of an opportunity for optimization because I saw like in the, the notes, was, oh, the first one can be mutable. So I don't know if the runners make use of it, but probably they, they, they do. In this use case where we change scale, it's not possible, but if the scale keeps the same, uh, we could just reuse the first one and add everything onto the first one. Um, um, and again, for our uh, use case, as an accumulator, it takes a double, but like it could take another metric or longs or something. We made it abstract. So we had like, we have a, a double to exponential histogram or 
an exponential histogram to data points. So that's a bit it. So how is that graphically kind of in action? So let's let's look. So spent lots of time on on uh, graphics. <laughs> so um, it's actually interesting to see, see, uh, see it in, in action. Um, and also note the size of, of that accumulator. So even with no data points, the size is kind of 32 bytes while your input is zero. So you end up with something bigger. Uh, your first data, the first data point actually grows your array to store all your buckets, but, but it's not the first element. So it's like the, well, I don't know which element, uh, I don't know. So it grows actually substantially. So it's get, actually getting bigger than the input. So it's not, not actually shrinking your data, you're growing your data. And it takes a while before it, before, before it hits. So if you see, uh, but it's not growing, see? Um, so it's kind of stays, stays the same. So that's why it's, it's green here, unless you hit a point that's bigger, like here, then it again grows. And then we're, we're not winning here. We're not winning anything. So, um, but what you do see though with a histogram is that you're hitting some larger amounts or your average starts kind of to skew. So here you already have like retained lots, lots of more information you see that there's two bumps like in your graph that's what you don't have with an average so i said like let's scale it up and then at least after a while put everything in one bucket after a while you see that actually the size just stays uh, stable and um, and doesn't grow anymore unless you ever actually add add buckets and then you can add and add and add so if you only have two elements, it's not worth it. But like after kind of a certain amount of elements, it's, it, it gets worth it to have an exponential histogram. Certainly if you have millions of millions of points per minute, uh, it's worth it. And you retain like lots of information. You can have like your 95 percentile, 99 percentile. You can get it all out. All out. So it's also interesting for combining. So. Um, it really, really, so the merge operation, uh, the previous was more like the add, 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 and here the merge operation, it really merges nicely. So that's, that's, that's what happens, even with different scales, although you will take the, the end result will be the uh, histogram with the lowest resolution. You see, if you it can be perfectly combined, and that's the result. So. How is this visual? How do you visualize that and compute? So you have a thread where the, your data comes in, your doubles, for example, the accumulator just builds up. You have multiple threads on one machine. It all has the, their own accumulators. Then a merge operation kind of uh, kicks in and voila, so you merge your data, uh, data down. Um, that happens on lots of machines if you're doing uh, massive parallel processing, that accumulator again can be merged together and it's the same merge operator. So that, that's, that, that's the beauty of it, of like implementing those four methods. Uh, you can reduce like a lot of information into one. So for us in the example, the output is then for the, that, uh, that same accumulator, but it could be the, the same metric as well. Um, but that was a design decision. So for us, it's like with an extra do FN. So conclusion. So that uh, will make Robert happy. So probably do that in, in Go again, uh, because those metrics are really kind of for people that are more into the operation side, as it is side and so on. And Java skills are very hard to find. While Go, uh, there's kind of more an abundance of Go people that work in that realm. Um, so I think it's well worth to try this implementation out in Go and see how well it performs. Um, so, so what's next is a full implementation with negatives and so on. Um, 
it has an exemplars. I don't know if people know what exemplars are, but like if it comes from a trace, if the double is kind of a measurement from a trace, an exemplar is that trace information there. So it keeps on the buckets. Per bucket, you can then keep like exemplars uh, to keep. That will kind of make your data a lot bigger. But if you have millions of points, you just keep just a few of them. And that's kind of my dream is like doing PromQL in BIM. So PromQL is also something that's been worked in operations. So I think it's possible, just an idea. Um, that you write PromQL, it outputs the beam to have runs that actually calculate what you describe. It's comparable to your SQL transform. Take your SQL in and it creates a beam pipeline. So I, I think it's possible. So. Questions?